Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I will be building the Hasugawa Kawanishi N1K2J Shidenkai in 148 scale. This model was bought for, for me by a friend who got it in, at Mirax Hobbies in Chile, Santiago, Chile to be more precise. It's a great place to get Hasugawa planes if you are a modeling nut because it has plenty of Japanese planes such as the Aichi Dif everyone, a different one, Aichi Difray Val, and several other Hasegawa models, including plenty of Arfix kits. So, yeah, check it out if you ever travel to Santiago de Chile. Today, I will be doing the unboxing, and then I will be showing, I will be showing you, uh, I will be showing you first the instructions with the decals. Then I will open the bags to see to make a close up of the parts. And then I will start by building the cockpit as usual with all the planes. So here we can see the artwork from Shigeo Koike, a beautiful artwork of the Shidenkai in flight. Inside the box we can see the instructions, transparent parts with the polycaps for the propeller and all the, all the parts containing a single plastic bag which is great if you for kids that don't have many pieces but Hasegawa tends to do this and most of the pieces and sometimes some pieces fall from the fall of the spruce and end up in at the bottom of the bag which he, which also has the risk of getting loose at the end once opening the bag so yeah here are, here are the instructions let me you can see hopefully you can see them here perfectly the instructions in Japanese, the story of the plane in Japanese and English. Here you can see, I hope you can see clearly here the, the, the history of the aircraft in English. Here you can see the decals. They are a bit thick, so I will be using Tamiya, Tamiya Mr. Mark Setter, Softer, sorry, and the White 15 for Naoshi Kan and the White 3 for another pilot. You can also do undersides, upper sides. You you can also do you can't do any other plane than weight fifteen or free, even though you have the yellow numbers for another planes. Here you can see the cockpit instrument pa the instrument panel decals, and the the yellow the yellow bars will be glued will be added first in the decaling process and then the fifteen or the free. I will be showing you the instructions. As typical with typical with Hasegawa, we start with the sprue map. You can see clear parts, cowling, wings, fuselage, propeller, and other ancillaries. Paint color callouts, callouts. Here you can see them clearly, clearer. You can see, hopefully, you can see here the sprue map. And now, there you can see the instructions better first first step is constructing the cockpit you can the floor the cockpit floor then the fuselage fuselage cockpit fuselage sides attaching the gun side the the instrument panel seat on the second step you glue the the cockpit to the fuselage hubs and then open this hole, this, then you cut this area if you want to attach the clear part. Step three, where is step three? Where is step three? I can't find it. Here, step three is building the wheel wells and the wings. Here you can see you, you, don't, you must not cut these two pieces because they are for the flaps. Then on step four, you glue the wings to wings and horizontal stabilizers to the fuselage. And then on step five, you will the main landing gear. Step six is for the engine. And then step, se step seven, installing the engine to the f front fuselage half. And then the installation of the landing gear. Then we continue with the construction of the flaps, which I will be posing in the down position because they look really not well. All, all, every aircraft looks awesome in the, with the flaps down. And then the last, is the last part to install is the propeller. Now turning the page, you can see here that the kit comes with two options, Naoshi Kano's white 15 and 
Koji O'Hara's White Free. They are from the 343rd Naval Flying Group. I think it, I can't remember if it was the Tainan Flying Group, but I think that was from Seguro Sakai. You can see here also that the painting scheme is very simple. Kawanishi dark green over aluminum, 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 whatever you choose to call it. The markings are also pretty simple, yellow leading edge recognition bands, red, the Hinomarus on the upper sides and the lower sides, and the Hinomarus on the fuselage with the white back background. Now that we've taken a look at the instructions, I will be showing you the parts, so bear with me until I get them out of the bag. I won't be take, you can see here the polycap for the propeller, and I won't be removing the bag from the clear parts because I'm afraid of losing one of the one of these, and these are very hard to hide if I lose one. So now that the instructions are done for, now with a bit of zoom up, zooming out, uh, cutting the bag, cutting again the bag because the, the knife is dull. Let me take care of this. There. So the first part to be inspected is the now scowling. I think it, it this is the what the modelers call side mo slide molding, and it looks really nice. No flash at all. Nice panel lines. This here you can see the the fuselage hubs, the f the engine face, the different uh, exhaust petals, open or closed, landing gear doors, exhausts, fuselage hubs. As, you can see also the fine panel lines and you can see the interior is bare because you glue the fuselage walls into this opening and then you close the other fuselage hub. Nose cone flaps in the extended position here and in the closed position here. No, sorry, the flaps are to be glued together and then you decide if you glue them in the extended or closed position, the propeller horizontal stabilizers and the wheel wells. Here you can see the propeller shaft. Here we can see the the main, let me zoom out, there. Here we can see the smaller pieces such as the flap rails, cockpit sidewalls, cockpit floor, seat which has a bit of flash, fuel tank, fuel tank, fuel tank mounting, main landing gear, wheels, wheel hubs, and as for the last part, we can see here the wings. They look really nice, N really nice panel lines. Thankfully, now I have with this tripod, I can show you better what I have to before I start building it. And you can see here several ejector pin marks that have been sanded off by the Hasebawa employees. Normally the flaps, the flaps on the shinde on the shiden say shiden kai served for had two purposes, one to provide lift and the last one to have some combat maneuvering in the heat of the battle. Now the flaps only opened when landing, I think so, and then when, as I told you, on the while in combat. The, that gave the uh, the pilot a, a, a maneuverability maneuverability advantage over the allied pilot. So usually I don't, I don't know much about Japanese aircraft. So sorry if I'm doing I'm miss mislabeling something. So yeah, now that I have shown you all the sprues, I will be buying them again. Buying them. I will be put, placing the sprues back inside the the plastic bag and hopefully the next th the next thing I will be doing is to be applying paint for the for the f for the cockpit floor and all of that so yeah I will be closing this first part by showing you the 
the the art box art again so hopefully you in, you will enjoy this video take care and i'll see you in the next clip in which i will hopefully well, i won't be uh, kicking down my tripod which i think i want because i have per a very nice view of the model so yeah i will be painting the kit with rebel aqua colors so take care and i'll see you in the next clip now before starting the build of the Shiden Kai, I wanted to show you what I will be using to build the kit itself. For starters, we have Uhu Plast, which is a special glue designed by Uhu for scale modeling. This I will be using this one instead of Re Rebel Contacta because it was cheaper and it was available when I went to the hobby shop. Next to it are the my collection of brushes. Some are some are fairly new, as you can see, the, the ones with the orange bristles. Others are fairly used and maimed, and maimed, such as, let me find it. Where is it? Where is it? Such as this one. This has been my faithful brush to paint several, several pla planes. And it has seen better days, so I think I will be replacing it, replacing it soon with this one, which is perfectly clean and new. Now, these are the knives I will be using. This one, which is already a bit dull, dull are for the plastic parts. And this one, as it says here, calcas, which means decals, which is fairly sharp, still has the... The, the the sharp edge I will be closing it to avoid cutting myself next next up is la gotita super glue masking tape my I don't know it's my water container for decals to apply the decals for the hot water this one this this base I don't know glasses for the the base is made with I don't I can't remember how do you say the name of the things you use to put water. I know it's glass, but I can't remember the other name. This is where I put my the water for my brushes. I isopropyl alcohol. This will be the decal softener I will be using for the decals of the Tami of the Hasegawa kit. Mr. Hobby, Mr. Mark Softer. Some what remains of my cotton buds. This glass is for the decals to cut the, to cut decals. A collection of several sandpapers from course to fine. And then here here is my here are my toothpicks to apply to move the decals on the aircraft surface. And last but not least, we have my Rebel Aqua Paints. These are perfect for brush painting since they are water-based and can be thinned with water and can be cleaned from the aircraft surface with alcohol, the alcohol I showed you before. So yeah, now that, that I show, I've shown you this, hold on, hold on this copper wire to unclog the nozzle of the glue when it becomes clogged so yeah now that i've shown you the all my tools let's start the build of the shiden kai right now all right guys now that i have conducted the 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 unboxing of the shiden kai it's time to tell you about my battle plan. As you can see, I have already removed the plastic bag from the, the parts. The only remaining protected sprue are the clear parts on the polycaps. So my battle plan will be to paint everything that I can to paint on the sprues. For example, the proper blades will receive a coat of, 46, of Rebel 46 Nato Olive with aluminium silver steel hubs 
uh, the flaps will be painted after I attach them to the model. I mean the the edge of the flaps will, will be painted silver with the main surface in black in RLM for RLM70 black green. Here is the propeller shaft. The nose cones will be painted also RLM70. The cowling won't be painted because little will be seen. And the cockpit parts will be painted with Rebel 48 C green because I don't want to buy different paints for different models so I have to make do with the paints I have. Most of these parts will, as I told you, will be painted in Rebel 48 C green. And as you can see here, the cockpit, the instrument panel, sorry, has raised details. So I will be painting painting it black and apply the decal and soft it, soft it with soften it with Tamiya Mark Fix Strong. The same the wheels will be painted RLM66 with silver hubs. Here is the tail wheel for last minute assembly and several other smaller ancillaries. The wheel walls will be painted silver and nothing else. Here you can see the holes for the gun, for the gun, mount, gun mounts. And the engine has the option for closed or open cooling flaps, radiator flaps. I will choose the open option. Here you can see the wheel, the gear doors. And as you can see here, there, are, there isn't any detail on the parts because mo the parts, the detail supplied on two different dif on two different side walls. The engine face will be painted black, and because nothing else will be seen. As I told you, here are the gear struts, which will be painted black with silver oleos. They are broken. Turns out I won't be able to to do anything. I see what I can do to fix it. All right, guys, I have some very good news to report. I was able to fix the landing gear struts by ap applying first so a a blob of Uhu Plast, and then I reinforced the the landing gear by applying the scissor link and as you can see here I, I glued two on each sorry two on each gear leg two metallic two clips to make it stronger I then glued the landing gear doors to make it to make the assembly stronger now that that's done, I will start by I will formally start the kit by using Rebel 48. Can you see it? Rebel 48 C green, and I will paint the the cockpit parts, which are the bulkheads. Instrument panel will be painted black, and some other stuff. Here's, here's the first coat of interior green. As you can see, it's rather thin, a rather, rather thin paint, so it will need a couple of coats in order to fully cover the surface. But it's better to have several thin coats of paint rather than a thick one, because you will be able to preserve the, the detail of the kit. Here are the, the bulkheads painted interior green. Now the pilot seat. I think it's also an interior green. The back of it is also painted interior green. What else? What else? The I think nothing else is ah yes, the cockpit the instrument the seat retainers. Here they painted in, our, in interior green. A bit more paint. And here we have it. Now I will paint the instrument panel in black. 
I will first close the the paint lid to a, onto its box. Now in black I will paint the instrument panel and the guns, the 20mm cannons. Prior to gluing the instrument panel to the to the cockpit I will apply the decal the instrument panel decal. Here you can see how I paint the the guns. It's better to paint everything like this before starting before reaching the final painting stage because it speeds up the painting process. Other thing I was I was thinking on painting was the the engine face because although it won't be much seen on the on the kit, it's better to have something something painted rather than seeing the black the light gray the black gray face the light gray face on on the video i know it's only a single coat of black but it will work for my purposes there you have it now is there anything else needed no i think that's all for the black now i will i will use rebel 91 steel to paint the rudder pedals there and some other parts this is the sound of me Cleaning my brush, I will use what remains of my seal, my steel color, to paint several parts such as the rudder pedals. I forgot to paint the the other the other the the controls of the cockpit in black. I will do that right now. Here I am cleaning my brush. Oh, I also forgot to paint the the control stick. Well, that will be painted now after applying the black. Now we have one, two, another three cockpit parts. Something else. Let me check. Yes, this. The crank case, I think it's called. Don't yell at me if I don't know how it is called. Please tell me in the comments. The sharp eyed among you may see that I have already also glued the fuel tank, the external fuel tank. Here are more parts that need black painting because they are details for the, the cockpit. Some more paint, some more areas will need uh, again interior green. I will open the dark green again. And I will paint them in interior green. The instrument, the cockpit control stick. Here more, I am applying more paint. The seat will also has more paint applied to it. And I think that's it for now. I think I will also apply in a coat of where is it? Rebel 59 Sky Blue, which is the same color, which is the same color used as RLM 84, which is a of the same shade as as Sky as, as a Sky Type S from early RAF fighter from the Battle of Britain. I will paint the fuel tank with this color to speed up the painting the assembly process. The good thing about rebel colors is that they self level. So with a bit of water they will look great after a couple of brushes of coats. I wasn't showing anything, sorry.
so there you have it the first stage of construction of the kit has been finished i will keep applying paint to the cockpit parts until i achieve full opacity on the parts and then i'll start i'll show you how i glue them hopefully the landing gear the landing gear will be strong enough to hold the model itself once it's once the it's time to apply them to the model i'm caref i'm I'm confident that they will hold the model okay, but I won't be moving the parts a lot. I won't be moving the plane a lot because I don't want to see all my effort be become ruined because of of mishandling the model. So take care and I'll see you in the next clip. All right, guys, what you are seeing right now is the instrument panel. I, w I will apply the decal of it, or of it and in hot water to make it more flexible. I also removed part of the carrier film because it would difficult the the conforming part of the decal. It would difficult the decal from conforming to the surface. Now I will apply water. I'll check if the decal moves. Not yet. I apply. I will apply more water. Let it. Let it rinse and then apply the decal. There. Now it moves on from the backing sheet. There. I will apply the decal now. Hopefully I won't break it. It's stuck to my finger. Add some water. There. There, perfect. Now I will remove the excess, the excess water from it. You can see the decal doesn't properly fit on the up on the raised details of the cockpit of the instrument panel, but I will wait a bit for it to set, and then I I will apply the the decal softener, which is Mr. Mark. What is it? Yes, which is Mr. Mark Softer from Tamiya. I think it's Tamiya. I will let it set a bit. May let, let's wait until the timer hits three minutes on, of the video, and then I will apply the 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 softer. Oui, sorry, I moved the decal out of place. Guess I have to restart the counter. Carefully, carefully, let's move it carefully to its place. There. Does it look okay? Yes, it looks okay. Let's wait until the timer now hits four minutes. And I will apply the softer. It's always very exciting to see how the decal conforms into the panel lines and crevices of the surface. It's very, it's very th therapeutic, if I might add. So yeah, now that I'm waiting for the decal to set, I will show you that I've painted the propeller in brown, which is cl as close as possible to the real color. It still needs another coat of brown for it to to fully cover the surface. Let me check. I think it's okay right now. So I will apply the Mr. Mark software, making sure I don't drop it. And here are the codes of Mr. Mark software. 
first an abundant single one and then the remaining one so, sorry only one sorry two there now i will wait for it to set and that will be all for today i have painted quite a bit of surfaces from of the model so now i will wait for the decal to set matte varnish it and then tomorrow I will keep working on the plane. Tomorrow will be the co cockpit construction, which I will show you how I build it by gluing the parts. So take care and I'll see you in the next clip. All right, guys, welcome back to the video. Now, the, um, until, yesterday, until yesterday, we left off with the painting of several small, small parts, such as the cockpit side walls the cockpit floor and the seat and also the inclusion of the decal for the instrument panel and several other ancillaries to now i will start the kit itself by gluing the parts so first i will glue the glue all the small small bits into place and I hope I can show you I can show you that perfectly here. If not, I will zoom out and then zoom in on the on the video editor. Okay, the first step is to glue all this all these small parts. Here you can see them. They were they were all painted in either interior green or black. So now I will start by first checking if the glue the glue nozzle is unclogged which I hope it is which it is and now I will start by removing the cockpit floor from the sprue here you can see it there's a bit of a remaining of a remaining part of the sprue which I will remove with the knife here too. There, closer. There, perfect. Here on this side too. Now that that's done, I will check how the how everything goes, and I will first add the side panels which are parts E15 which is this one here as you can see I dry brushed it with some aluminium with, with some steel which is the same paint I will be using for the for the fuselage if it doesn't if I don't run out of it when that stage comes to fruition I will apply I will move the, sp the sprues a bit. Let me first remove all the glue residue from the nozzle of the glue. And now I will apply some glue here. And I will place the part to its correct placement area. I will do the same with parts E14, with several of the E parts. Now it's time for part E14, which is even smaller than E15. It's this one. Hopefully no parts will go flying after, and after not being careful of, of removing them from the sprue it goes like this this part is L shaped so you must be sure to apply to apply the part with the L going forward if you can understand me now I will glue part E18, which is even smaller. It's this one, this small, small little part, 
which goes in here in onto this opening so i will remove it carefully from the sprue placing my finger over it is this one is it this one yes it's this one now i will apply more glue to the area this has been done and now i will apply this teeny small part there perfect you can see here that all the small parts have been added hopefully no none will go flying once i stop building the kit now the next four parts will be the control stick trim wheel and some and the rudder pedals i will first start with part e17 which i think is the throttle E17, where is E17? It's right here, it's this part. I will cut it away from the camera and now I will glue it in, in position, in place. I choose not to remove all the parts from the sprue as soon as, as, as I go, I prefer to glue each part carefully instead of removing all of the parts from the sprue gates because i'm afraid i will lose some now it's the time for part e23 which is the inst the copy the instrument the control stick which as you can see has a small bar on it carefully i will remove it there it's been removed now I will apply glue to the area where the control stick goes there it's been glued a bit of excessive I've exceeded it myself with the glue so now I will remove it with some napkin now it's time to apply part E24 luckily all the parts all the main parts here are are clearly numbered where is part E24 here part E24 is this one another small part I need to remove carefully from the sprue there now to remove the remaining sprue gate, which has been done. Now to add glue to the opening of the part and glue it in its correct position. I don't remember doing all of this in my first build of the Shiden Kai, but it, it's good to know that all the parts will be here. Now it's time to add the rudder pedals. Same technique as before, add the glue. And then glue the part. After I finish building the cockpit, I will stop until tomorrow. There, you can see it, I've glued the all the main parts into place now it's time to build the the side walls here which need some smaller pieces to be added e20 i will first start with part b14 which is the one that has the propeller b14 is not the other side b14 is this one so i will remove it from the sprue alongside together with together with the the ejector pin marks this model was bought at mirage mirax hobbies in santiago de chile i also keep all the smaller 
smaller ejector pin marks because I like them. Now I am removing the small small residue. And with that removed, it's time to add part E19 into this area here. Here, here, here. I can't remember if I painted it, and if I didn't, it doesn't matter. E19, yes, I painted it. So I will add some glue to the sidewall. Remove part E19 from the sprue, which hopefully won't go flying once you remove it. It's been removed. And now I will apply apply it, I glue it here, which is very small. Very, very small. I think I have done a, a, a nice job into gluing it. Let me, it's too small for my hands. If Plasmo can do a fine job when building his kits with smaller parts, then I think I can do a fine job when gluing this part, which is also rather small. Hopefully, there. Hopefully, the hopefully the parts will fit all right. Now I will remove part E15, which is this one. We are now 11 minutes into the. Six, six clip and it rem and I also need to to build the seat I won't paint the the seat, seat belt harnesses because I don't want to you may call me lazy but uh, it's too small and I don't have the correct brush for it I need a small teeth brush here, here's part E20, which goes into this hole here on part E15, sorry, B15. Now I will remove it from the sprue, apply some glue into the opening. and attach the throttle lever. Is it this one? There. I think I removed some paint by applying incorrectly glue, liquid glue over it. So I will grab my black paint and they are fixed. Now it's time to build the seat, the pilot seat, which is an easy job to do. First, I need to remove. First, I need to remove the instrument panel, which has already been decalled. There. There, I hope you not the best, but it's okay. I think next time I will forego to add the decal for the instrument panel and, the, and just add the and just paint it black. Now I will glue the instrument panel to this piece, it has three, three holes which are the same for the instrument panel first I will remove the the remaining residue on this notch goes the gun sight so now that we have the part free of of bars I will add some glue and then I will apply the instrument panel decal the instrument panel, sorry. Here you can see it. 
perfect now I will remove part part which part which frame is this E17 E47 which is where the pilot seat is attached here you can see it, that it has two notches which have been covered by paint I will remove the paint with my knife and now that's done I will remove the pilot seat by removing it without the knife because it the the sprue gate was under the seat and now I will add parts E22 and E21 which are perfectly which are very identifiable I don't know if it's said like that these two I will remove them by sorry not for not paying attention but I will remove them off camera there these two small pieces make up the seat the seat the seat of the pilot now I will glue the both parts into place you can see it yes you can see it there for glue glue marks E21 goes first, goes here. There, it's in place. And now it's time to add part E22, which goes like this. That is if I can locate the holes. And I was able to locate them. Now that the, the seat supports are glued, it's time to add the seat itself, which needs glue to be added into these parts. And now I will add the seat itself. There, it fell off. First, se first seat added. And the second support has been glued into place. Does it look okay? Yes, it looks okay. There, perfect. No, it's not, no, it's not perfect. The seat is skewed to one side. It's hard to record with the camera in front of me. Now I think it's okay. This is taking too long. I want to go to the next stage. There, perfectly, perfect. Now that everything is glued together, it's time to add, er, to join everything. I will start by adding the instrument panel to the floor. Here you can see how I add it. There. Now it's time to add the, the seat holder. I will apply glue here. Now I only wish to be able to place the seat correctly. There was an attempt. There, it's already it's glued. Now it's time to add the side walls. 
first it's part there I'm applying glue to the side walls and it's time to add this this part and it fits perfectly now time to add the other the other side wall I will apply glue here here too into the side into the bulkheads and now it's time to glue the throttle lever thing there there the cockpit has been finished not the best jobs not the best job but it's okay for me now I will apart from the cockpit which will be left to dry I will start building the propeller which is a simple assembly wait if I can find it here there are only four parts Proper, propeller itself oh, I, don't, I didn't paint the 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 propeller hub so well, well I will paint it right now and while it dries I will glue the the cockpit to the fuselage hub as you can see here I'm at the, I'm here this goes like this some metallic shades for the propeller hub I hope you can see it correctly you can see it because it's too blurred there perfect now I will leave the propeller to dry and I will start working on the fuselage you can see two halves I will remove I will remove them with my nip snipper not the best but it's okay it, for its job it's okay i wish i had the tamiya one with the sharper sharper blades but in the future i will buy one for now it's it's this one which i've used since i came back to scale modeling if i can find there there the hubs have been removed and now it's time to remove all the remaining burrs of, of the plastic here you can see one one on the underside and there is also a bit of flash on the parts maybe because Haseawa has used the molds quite a lot so some flash has slipped away from the con quality control and this one, this remaining spruner. So now it's time to add the cockpit. If I can find the step. Here. It doesn't need to be painted or it, it will be painted because everything covers, the cockpit covers the any areas that should be painted. So what I will do is to apply some glue to the to the fuselage hubs. I also have my masking tape in order to tape the fuselage hubs. I will apply glue to this area here and then a bit here. You can see how I apply the cockpit. there there and it fell off it needs glue here and here glue here again a bit more glue here
there now i will let it i will let the the glue harden a bit and who am i kidding i will apply the this fuselage half now half now just to check there aren't any parts to be removed or something before applying the the other half of the fuselage since that's a no i will start applying glue onto the joints here too here you can see how i apply the glue the on the empennage too not do not apply lots of glue because it will melt the plastic and that's something i don't want to to have applying glue to the to the to the cockpit sidewalls and that will end with the glue gluing of the fuselage half Now I will grab my masking tape and start applying the start gluing every, start set, taping everything in order to keep the to keep everything square. Any any imperfections will be sanded there. Front fuselage half is also taped together, and this small part also is glue is taped together. Here you can see the cockpit trap bit in between. As you can see, you can barely see, you can barely see anything. Now I hope the propeller has dried, hopefully, and I will be able to. It hasn't dried. It has. Mm. Still, it's it looks okay. Looks okay. So yeah, I will remove it from the screw by cutting this area. There you have it, four bladed propeller. I will cut the propeller shaft. Does it need anything? Let me check. It doesn't. So I will cut the propeller shaft, I will remove any imperfections, now I will apply the glue to the shaft. There, there, and there. Let me check if, yes, it goes like this, does it? Let me check again. No, it doesn't go like this, it goes like this. So I may have applied it in the wrong position on my first sheet and kai, but I will make sure to glue it in place correctly now. There. Now it's time to remove the propeller, the propeller nose cone, which I don't know why it comes divided into two parts. Maybe there was a super I and I am not aware of of the sheet and kai and that needed a separate separate nose cone but here we are I will remove the bar the imperfection there and there the same thing for the other half which will be glued Carefully, there. As you can see, I've removed some paint because of the glue, but that's fixable. Now I will 
Glue in House Cone to the Propeller itself and then and now repaint the area there. I think it's okay. I think it looks pretty nice. There. Now I will paint back the areas with the, where the paint has lifted because of my own wrongdoing. There. Some black green. Paint here, paint here. Some more paint to add to the proper itself and there you have it the proper has been completed so now we have a complete fuselage sans the wings and the engine and the propeller itself now I will leave everything to dry properly and, and also I, on, I am also a bit tired and I will build the the wings tomorrow or, ma or maybe later today. So take care and I'll see you in the next clip. Alright guys, as you can see here I have removed the wings and the wheel welds from the sprue. I decided to do that off camera because it took quite a bit of time to do that in front of the camera and it also reduced the, the precision of my cuts. So now what I will be doing is to build the wings step, where is the step? Step free. You can see how the wheel wells attach the top wings and then on step 7 on the nose you attach paste B12 which is this one, I don't know how it's called. So yeah, first I will glue, first I will remove a small sprue remnant from the from the wheel well and as you can see this piece goes here and forms the the roof of the wheel well so now to avoid any damages I will add let's zoom in I will add some glue into this area to the, into the into the opening here too here on the attachment point I will close the nozzle and I will add the roof here if it wants to stay in place here and then the other part of the roof here there perfect now what I will do is to grab my masking tape and glue the wings together here you can see them and then at la I'll lastly I think it says it said like it said like that I will add the carburetor which is this piece I think so now I will add glue to the, to the sur connecting surfaces if it wants to go out a bit of glue here some here more glue here and glue here hopefully the amount of glue won't melt the, the part because if it does that then it will be quite a troublesome experience so here we go we add the top of the top surface of the left wing and add a bit of tape tape like this now I have to rush a bit to avoid the glue from the other side from drying 
before applying the the other wing, the other top half. And now the the second wing, which goes like this. Here you can see I left a small step. It can be corrected. Famous last words. There. Now I will tape the wing. And I think I will also start building the extended flaps, which are the combat flaps. But first I will add on these four holes here, more glue. But first I clean the nozzle. Here I add some glue. To attach the carburetor, carburetor. It goes like this. There. Perfect. Now I will build the... Where are they? Where's the step? I can't find it. Here I will build the flaps which come in two halves and you, and you can place them in the open or closed position. I will glue them in the extended position which is how the how, we, how it comes originally in the kit. So first I have to do le the left side with pieces B7, B9, E51 and E27. Let's start. Parts for the left flap which are B9 and B7. B7, B7 and B9. I will remove them from the sprue gate. Glue them together. And then attach the... Mm, I need to apply more glue. Because it got removed when the part fell. I think it goes, it goes like this. Yes, it goes like this. Let me check the instructions. Ah, that's a sigh from work. Yes, it looks correct. Now I will attach piece E51 to the left side of the flap and then part E27 to the right side of the flap. We parts E, e the, is, the E frame is here and I will apply the parts. Here you can see them E27, 26 and 20 no E28, 27, 26 and 25. I first need part E E27. Where is E27? Here it is. Which goes atta which attaches to the to the left side of the flap. E27 is for the down position, yeah. How does it attach? Let me check. It's supposed to have some sort of triangle. There. It, atta it attaches like this. How, how am I looking this? Let me check before I glue, because I don't want to make a mistake. There. It glues like this in the down position. I will apply some glue on the surface. And then apply part the other, the other part. You can see that I'm applying the glue. 
but you can see me attaching the flap the flap actuator there in the down position there now I will close the nozzle of the glue and I will attach piece E51 which are which is where is it these ones these parts E51 is this one which has some flash which will be tough to remove because it's such a small piece there you can see it it also has a small 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 something now i am removing the the remaining sprue gate and i will be applying glue to it again and this goes like this can you see it yeah you can see it now i will check again the instructions and the part goes let me check it a bit closer the part goes like this i think goes like this let me check how does it attach does it attach like that i don't know It, it does look like like it attaches like this let me check with the wing this should be the this one it should attach like this it attaches like this so it's okay how it goes with this small space it does look okay there this is how it should look on the completed kit it even looks i think Yes, I think it looks okay. I will now let it harden on one side. And now I will work on the other flap, which is, which are on the sprue on this sprue. I will remove it right now. One part removed, cleaning the boards. now cleaning removing the other half and like my first she my first shidenkai this time i will make sure to paint the leading edge of the flap with in the underside color which is silver come on come out there and there goes like this there the second flap has been done now it remains to attach the actuator arms which for the right flap are parts E28 and E52 no, which go I think which that goes like like this, this. I think it goes like this. I can't I can't see it clearly. Oh, because it's upside down. Of course, it's upside down. So it sh so the one of the parts should have that small indentation i will first glue part e28 which is 
what is it this which is what is it this part e28 it doesn't have any imperfections on the surface so it will be glued without much issues issues here you can see a test fit now i will apply the glue but first i will check if the nozzle is nozzle is unplugged there now i will attach the actuator arm There, first actuator arm is locked in place. And now for to start with part, part, let me check again. There, part E52, which goes on the other side of the wing, of the flap. Part E52 is this one, which also has the small, the small indentation on it. Okay, now it's been removed and now I will attach it to the second flap. I'm getting closer into the painting stage, but first I have to glue the wings to the fuselage, which will most likely happen later today. There. Now to glue the other flat, the actuator, the other actuator run, which goes like this. See, it has the same, same, same look as the other flap. There you can see it. Now I will let these flaps to dry and it's misaligned there. And while that happens, I think I will Proceed with the what is the fuselage? Ah, here it is. I will proceed with the installation of the ailerons, which are here. First, I, you need to, first I need to attach attach them with the fuselage upside down. Since these parts are small, are bigger, I will zoom out. I will attach part B11 and B10. B11 is for the le for the left hand side of the fuselage. Where is B11? Here is B11. We'll remove it from the sprue, clean any imperfections, and then glue it in place. Hopefully the fit will be tight enough to avoid the the, the horizontal stabilizer stabilizers from drooping while it's drying. So it goes like this, like this. You can see it has a notch where the other, the other aileron will go. There, I will apply, will zoom in. I will apply more glue here. Glue here, here and here. Now I will glue it to the cor corresponding fuselage side, leave it like that a bit, and now I will attach part B10, which is the other aileron. As you can see the build is proceeding quite fast, which is how I like to build my planes. I don't tend to to fill seams or anything, but I need to comply to certain standards from modeling at Modeling Madness, so this aircraft will not will be built with the with the there with the film sealed. There you have it. Now I will zoom out. I think it's straight enough. Do you think it? There, perfect. It's now straight. I think. It's it, is it? 
yes, it's straight enough. Now I will make a small test fit with the the upper wing to check if it fits okay. I will remove this tape because it's in interrupting the fit, interfering with the fit. I mean, and now I'll check the wing join area. And with a bit of effort, it does more or less fit okay. As you can see here, it needs to be filled. But I want... Ah, no, it be, it's because this part was interfering with the fit. It does, doesn't need filler, luckily. There, now that it doesn't interrupt the fit. Let me check. It does need some filler, yes. What I can do is to use a spreader bar to spread the fuselage outwards, and that will. There's more remaining. Let me see if I, if by removing this, this small imperfection, the fit improves. There, let's check again if the feed is okay. Much better. Yes, it was that small imperfection that was causing the feed issues. We have an almost complete Shiden Kai, which will hopefully resist the weight, landing gear will resist the weight of the model. There is something else interrupting the feed, but I think I can pressure it to to close itself with enough glue. So yeah, now that's done, I will wait for everything to set. And I will see you most likely tomorrow, because now it's night time in Argentina. And I will leave you with this side of the, of the fuselage and wings and the flaps. I will make a test fit of the landing gear right now to test if the model holds its own. So I'll see you in the next clip tomorrow. Well guys, after making a mess of the plane earlier and sanding quite a lot, I <clears throat> finally happy to present you a more or less filled and sanded aircraft. As you can see here, I had to rescribe some panel lines and so and paint them in black because I filled them I filled the original panel lines accidentally with the cyano and had to grab my knife and rescribe them. On the on the upper fuselage side the there weren't any panel lines so I filled the center seam line and rescribed the panel lines and I also did the same for the nose. Now what I will be doing is to paint the, the the wings first and the horizontal stabilizers with Rebel 40 black green. I will use my trusty brush. So what I will do now is moisten my brush and apply the paint as such. I won't be showing you how I, I how I paint everything because it would take a lot of time and I'm sure you guys aren't interested in seeing a grown man painting constantly. So I will paint the first coat of RLM70 black green on the upper surfaces and then I will keep applying paint until I achieve full opacity of the paint which shouldn't take long because black the RLM70 I use has a very strong pigment and it takes little time to cover everything the flap will be the inner side of the flap will be painted metal once the, I achieve full opacity on the on the wings I will mask the area and paint it silver Hopefully I don't run out of paint once I come to it. The time comes to 
to paint the underside also in, in silver silver steel alumin aluminum everything is the same color I'm not really worried about about that because I only me will be seeing the result and you guys it's not a competition model so I don't, I won't worry much I think I directly won't be keep feeling I won't be feeling any more the panel lines because I don't I don't want to rescribe I had I had rescribing I had sending and filing filling whatever the wings are done so now the horizontal stabilizers I, I hate filling and sanding because it means I the panel lines will disappear so I guess I, I will stop publishing on modeling madness because the unless I feel and sand the panel line the panel lines the seams the creator of the page won't allow me to 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 put, to upload my articles again. So there you have it, the first coat of paint, WM70. I will brush some more to level the paint. Once the upper surfaces are completely painted, I, I will have to paint the yellow leading edge bands that were so characteristic of Japanese planes. And then I don't know what I will do. Maybe I will build my VF109 that is coming on the mail that has arrived today at, on the mail. I will pick it up as soon as I come back from uni. A friend will pick it up, sorry there better should i paint the radar yes maybe i will paint it there painting the radar the no the horizontal stabilizer sorry the the vertical stabilizer this is the vertical one the horizontal stabilizers are the ones i painted just now I will paint the rather like this because that's how it goes on the original Shiden Kai. Painting the other vertical stabilizer and the rather. There. Now I will let the paint to dry before start before I start applying the other the other coats of paints, the other coats of paint. As I told you, the the undersides will be painted metallic, and then where's my knife? Here it is. And then I will mask the area and make the masking meet here with the horizontal with the horizontal stabilizer, doing an upward pattern to make to achieve the the camouflage I want to do. So yeah, now that the the color the colors have been are being applied i will stop the video and i will meet you when i stop i start i start painting the undersides in the silver metallic take care and I'll see you in the next clip hello guys welcome back to the video as you can see in, before telling you how i masked the aircraft i will tell you that I also added later yesterday, late at night, the cowling and the exhausts. That wasn't recorded because the my phone was turned off, so that part will be missing. Now I used this kind of tape, masking tape, Cinta Pintor, to mask the tra leading, the the trailing edges of the wing and of the wings and the horizontal stabilizers, and I also taped the lower part of the radar. What I will be doing now is to paint the lower sides with Rebel 91 steel, which hope which has doesn't have much much left. So I hope it will be enough to to cover the the lower fuselage side. After that, I will be painting the yellow ID bands on the <clears throat> on the leading edge of the wings. Then I will proceed to glossing up the aircraft. And I will start decaling the plane. So now, now what I will do is to grab some of my metallic paint, and I will start by painting 
the fuse, the lower fuselage. Hopefully, there won't be the need of of a primer because I want to finish this aircraft once and for all. Because I didn't have much luck with it, with the landing gear broken and also the the mistake I did with the landing gear the, with the main wheels placing them in the incorrect position. So I will hopefully end up with a with an acceptable model that won't that who, with, whose landing gear won't crumble under the pressure under the weight of the of the of the model. You can see how I paint this area. I had masking tape because the Japanese had a very neat, a very neat way of painting their aircraft with clearly defined fuselage sides and all of that. Now that the middle of the plane is is painted, more I will use more silver, more more steel, sorry, to liquid. There, yeah, hopefully. There, much better. Now I will paint the wing, the lower wings. Placing pre, that, I won't have to repaint much of the of the upper sides of the plane because I masked. Here I am applying the paint to the to the to one of the flap in internal details i will be paint i will paint the 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 wheel how do you say it the wheel well with the same color because all the mo most times the japanese had a color called autake or ameiro i think ameiro was the caramel color used in the early phases of the pacific war And it didn't last very long. Now I will grab more silver paint and I will apply it with some more water to the fuse, to the under wing, underside. Hopefully I will need lots of coats to cover the model because if I need to have more more coats to paint the plane. I will run out of it and the only metallic paint remaining I have is, where is it, it was here, Rebel 90 Silver, which will have a different shade, but I'm confident the remaining, the, what remains of my paint will be enough to cover the fuse, to cover the lower side of the plane. The ailerons will be painted in, once the the aircraft, the lower sides have been painted, I will paint the... Sorry, it was unfocused. I will paint the... the ailerons with sky grey, which with sky blue, such as is recommended on several, on the other Hasegawa instructions for their... for their late in, in, for the Shidenkai in one for the second scale this old brush it's is very useful because I I am able to mistreat it mistreat mistreat it quite a lot without worrying about how it will end although I may go on the easy road route and not paint the ailerons but I think I will do it because it will look very colorful. I think the horizontal stabilizers are already dry. Let me pass a finger. It's already dry. So now comes the second coat of metallic paint. Here we go. Here you can see that the paint has been going over the wing. More paint on the horizontal stabilizer. Luckily this paint dries quickly enough. Here. 
much better. Now I will paint again the the real area here. And I will wait for the paint to dry on the on the under surfaces. Here it was drying and I didn't wait enough time. So we got the paint got removed. There. Now I will let the paint fully cure before proceeding to the next stage, which is keep painting the the the, the underside. So I will see you in the next clip. All right, guys. As you can see, I have finished painting the aircraft. The shiny, the, the it is really shiny because I apply the gloss varnish right now, which is Rebel Zero One Clear Varnish Gloss Varnish. And for the for the camouflage of the aircraft, I use Rebel Fifty Nine Sky Blue for the ailerons and horizontal stabilizers. Rebel Forty Black Green for the surface. 15 yellow for the leading edge band and my now over my now how do I say it my now extinct reserve of rebels 91 steel the co the remaining color I have now is rebel 90 si silver but the amount of paint in this tin allowed me to to paint it the sur under surface entirely now that was the sound of the me throwing the, throwing the the tin to the garbage. Now, what I will do tomorrow is to paint the to paint to decal the aircraft, which shouldn't pose many issues because there aren't many decals. We have a one big yellow band here, which will be applied first. Then the other num tail numbers, Hinomarus, and that's it. The Hinomarus for the for the fuselage come in two pieces. One has a white backing and the other is the red Hinomaru that is very really well known for modelers. It needs the white background to to make opacity for the number, which is white fifteen. As you can see here the ailerons were painted 59 sky blue, which is the same color as RLM84 and also as a way to speed up things I have painted the fuel the fuel tank with the braces in silver here are the pitot tube and some other parts this will go after I will paint it now and will go to, into the aircraft once it's finished I've also painted the, come on focus, focus, there the, the tail wheel was paint, has been painted, the cannons have been painted in black and this is the headrest which will be painted black too and what I also did was to paint the gear doors in silver. So now that, that this little update is done, I will leave you with the with some seconds to see the the kit and then I will end the video and pass, go to the next step which will be decoding right now. Alright guys, it's time for the decoding session. I will start by applying here's how the decoding, decoding will be. I will first start by applying the empennage decals. I then will apply the yellow band and then I will apply the white hino, white tri, white circle and then the Hinomaru. Then la, I will apply the upper upper wing Hinomarus and then the lower wing ones. That is if I don't make a mess such as with the Mirage with and the Empennage. The decals will be from the box, these ones. I will first apply the free for free fifteen and the A. I will use my trusty exacto knife with a, bl a brand new blade. Here I have the hot water and four cotton buds. Here they are. I will be. What I will do is to 
speed up this video because that's what I did in the Mirage one because I think you guys won't be interested in in seeing the whole the whole decaling process because that me that will take lots of time. So if you are interested in seeing me decal the aircraft entirely from the smallest detail to the latest one, please tell me in the comments. So now I will start the decaling session. I won't be
Well guys, as you can see I have progressed quite a bit with the aircraft I'm, We are now getting closer to the finish line I have glued the tail wheel, the fuel tank and the gear doors into position And now it's time to add the landing gear Before I, mod I, be I built it to, to give strength to the repair, one, to repair the gear And I've divided the landing gear between left and right so now that we have the kit almost completed i will add the right landing gear here there there we go and now i will apply, i will glue the left landing gear to its position now, what i will also be adding is are the Landing gear retraction arms, arms. There we go. Hopefully, the landing gear will be able to hold the model without breaking again. Looks okay. Now, what I will be adding are the retraction arms. I'm looking for them. The retraction arms are parts. E1 and E1, which are which are here. So, what I will do is to let me check something. Yes, I will remove the retraction arms from the sprue and then glue them into the into the landing gear this is one of the pieces this one will have some glue applied here here and then some glue applied into the wheel And now I will glue, it's too tiny and it's also rather difficult to do this with the, with the camera in front of me. Let's see if I can do it with, the right, with my right hand, I'm left handed, more or less. Let me check if I can accommodate it in place. Yes, I did it. Now I will glue the arm here. And here we have it, the first retraction arm glue, glued. And now I will do the same for the second one. Again, the same step, let's zoom in, I will apply glue here, and I will apply glue here, and I will do the same, I will apply the retraction arm, did I apply it into its hole, let me check. I didn't, there we go, and now glue it in place, perfect, perfect, it looks perfect, now what I will do is to glue the cannons, which are four small pieces, and then I will paint the headrest of the kit, and then the clear parts, one, two, three, four, there we go, four cannon barrels, which will be glued, each one of them into their openings, one, two, One, two, 
to there we go they fit into place just fine we only need to move them to have them in the correct position and now I will glue the left hand, left side cannons first cannon will go here if it leave, if it doesn't glue to my finger and the fourth cannon will be glued here there we go perfect now it only rem remains to have the glue cure and I will be able to start building the, sorry, building, painting the clear parts. Now I will leave the aircraft to dry like this. And I will go eat because I'm starving. So take care and I'll see you in the next clip with the aircraft completed. I also have, as I told you, assembled the propeller so that will speed up things. So take care and I'll see you in the next clip. Well guys, I have finished the Shidenkai from Haseawa. The remaining parts were to add were the gun sight, the antenna, the headrest and the clear parts. It, the kit went together fairly well except from the la for the landing gear which had broken in transit when I bought it. But all in all, it, it was a great kit. I shook, as you can see, the surface is still a bit shiny that's because i applied first a gloss coat and then a matte coat and i think that ended up making the surface look satin colors used were rebel aqua colors rebel 40 black green 50, 91 steel 59 sky blue for the ailerons and yellow for the leading edge ones so now i will leave you with the the final reveal pics so take care and I'll see you in the next video which will most likely be this one which was bought fairly recently are you ready to see which kit it is? another 109 from Ravel yay this one is Hartman's let me zoom out there we go a 109 a new 109 yay this kit will be built as soon as I'm free from obligations, from school and all of that. So take care, see the final reveal pics, and I'll see you in that build video. Bye. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like the subscribe and like the video. Take care.